So over the past month or so, a new discovery has been quietly influencing high-level chain gameplay. And I'm not sure when this tech was actually discovered, but it has only appeared at high-level play only very recently. In hindsight, it's something that seems so obvious, and yet it was hardly used, if at all, by changers of all skill levels. In fact, you could say that it slipped through the radar. This technique, like many others in this game, doesn't have a proper name yet, but in a recent blog, the Japanese player Asu described it uh, through Google Translate as a slip-through chain, and so I've decided to name this the slip chain. At first glance, this just looks like a normal chain. To understand why this technique is even considered a technique and not just a normal chain, we have to look at how chains are normally done. If you just want to skip to, you know, how to do this technique, then you can just skip the video too. So with this standard middle block formation, there are three sides to chain through. The top, the middle, and the bottom. Chaining through the top and bottom is simple, you can do it with just a chain starter and a chainer, but middle chaining is different because you usually need to have a player called a middle chainer, or so we thought. And this is because if you chain start from the center of the field, your chainers do not reach the ball in time and it just zooms past them. But with the middle chainer, your chainers can get into position to chain. Furthermore, having a middle chainer also adds power to the shot if their shooting power is high enough, and this allows players to brute force goals that they otherwise wouldn't have enough power for with only a single chain. But, of course, there are problems with this. Uh, first of all, you need your middle chainer to be charged and ready. This means that if your middle chainer is desynced with your final chainers, everything falls apart. If your middle chainer is charged, but your final chainers aren't, or the opposite happens, you probably won't be scoring that goal. And second, and maybe more importantly, as players get better and better at playing against chainers, uh, they have learned how to do something people call the frame 1 block. In the past, people would block before the final chain, meaning that the chainer can still shoot after the block, and so the final shot power is still very powerful. But with the frame 1 block technique, people have been able to block the shot after the final chain, and this really reduces the shooting power and makes it an easy catch for the enemy goalkeeper. This means that as long as a defender who can shoot block is charged, scoring with a chain will be impossible against players who are good at the frame 1 block, and who's a perfect defender who can shoot block and is always charged? Kirino. With his Macy Max, Kirino can effectively block every chain up to 3 times. And because of this, people have been placing him as a central defender in the second half when playing against Chain. And this basically nullifies all middle chains in the second half. So confronted with this problem, a few Chain players, most notably the previously mentioned us, began developing counter strats. This led to the highly successful developments of the Dodd Prison and Phalanx formations, but that's another video for another time. Now another less flashy development is this slip chain, and it was used extensively by me during the World Cup. Uh, by chain starting around this area, which is around the center but not exactly in the center, I found that your chainer is in position for a middle chain without requiring a middle chainer. Plus, depending on the position you chain start from, your chainer can be positioned somewhere between the enemy central and side defender, like here in the middle, which can make it more difficult to do a frame 1 block because of the awkward positioning. Like in this scenario, I do a slip chain where my opponent's central defender is charged, but his side defender is not. My opponent wants to switch to his Kazemaru, his central defender, to block, but instead it switched to Tsunami on the side because of the ball's trajectory. And Depending on the angle of the chain and the circle radius of the, descent of the defender circle, even frame 1 blocks can fail because the shot just barely misses the circle. So this slip chain solves both problems that I mentioned earlier. Now we no longer need to use a middle chainer to do a middle chain, so we have less gauge management to do. And we are also versatile where we chain through, depending on which enemy defenders are charged, we can pick and choose which side to chain from. 
And also, we can choose to free up a slot while still being able to chain through the middle because we don't need a middle chainer anymore. And this is especially important in the second half because usually we don't have enough space for guard keymen as well as chain starters. So with this, we can appoint one useless player, or quote unquote useless, in the attacking midfielder position. And this is something that I've been doing in the second half where I only have two chainers and I use Tsunami or Kirino, sometimes even Sane in this position. So, uh, shout out to Hiki for the inspiration for this kind of team comp. And it also nullifies enemy Kirino because you can simply avoid wherever he is placed. If he is placed in the middle, then you can completely ignore the middle while not wasting a slot for a middle chainer. And if he's placed on the side, you can still slip chain through the middle. So overall, this is not a groundbreaking meta-defining tech in any way. Chainers can survive without it, and players likely don't have to create counter strikes against it, at least for now. But it's still very useful, it's very simple, and it is really difficult to defend against when you do it right. So I hope more people start util utilizing this technique in their gameplay.